For this wonderful story, we go down under to the most eastern part of Australia, the beautiful Gold Coast in Queensland, where we find a delicious mix of a hardcore Instagram flexer douchebag named Tyson Schultz, aka ASX Wolf, an ex-wife left with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, a baby because somehow these days there's always a baby involved, stupid babies, nah, I'm just kidding, babies are cute, a trusting mother who got totally scammed by her own son, and a new girlfriend who loves Instagram more than she loves life itself. Oh, and did I mention that the son ends up in court being sued by his own mom? Yeah, that also happens. So we're only 20 seconds in and already we have a massive pile of shit. But wait, it gets even better. Because after a little break, Tyson Schultz actually doubled down on his stupidity, which is why just recently he got raided by the ASIC, better known as the Australian Securities and Exchange Commission. So yeah, that's a pretty fucked up situation to be in. But before we get into that whole disaster, let's first look at how exactly Tyson stole from his mom, bankrupted his ex-wife and conned thousands of people on Instagram, making them believe he's some sort of stock-picking genius. So this story starts in Queensland, home to Australia's famous Gold Coast, with its perfect waves and even more perfect, um, waves? Damn it, I need to focus. Okay, so Tyson Schultz starts with buying and renting out real estate along the Gold Coast, and before he can even finish the first sentence of his so-called origin story, he kicks it off with a big fat lie, saying, I am self-made and have never been given one cent, no family money. So right off the bat, that extra little nugget of information feels a bit like overkill, a bit forced, because why does he feel the need to specify that he has no family money? Is it because one of his grandfathers actually got rich in the oil business and since his father had to pay his mother $690,000 in the divorce settlement, I'm guessing the money sits on the dad's side of the family. A quick check of the court documents filed by his mother, Judith Gibbs, showed that Tyson was actually given $690,000 to invest in small retail businesses, so clearly he was lying. Now Tyson lies about pretty much everything in order to sell you on the idea of him being a successful entrepreneur and a million dollar stock trader. He does this to sell more courses through his investment company called DSI Capital, which has produced an absolute gem of an introduction video. So here we see Tyson, right? Now from the looks of things, he really sucks at investing, so at this point everything checks out. Then we move into the living room for some reason, where some sort of expert is now explaining to you how the stock market works. Now let me pause the video right here because things are about to get very complicated. You see, you buy here at the green arrow when it's low, and then you sell here at the red arrow when it's high. See, easy peasy. Ooh, ooh, I have a question. So when can we buy our first Lambo? Well, um, I think next week. Yay! Oh, sorry, my bad. They didn't actually buy a Lambo. They bought a Bentley, you know, a more realistic perspective. Now, Tyson also claimed that he started buying real estate at age 18 in Mermaid Beach, Palm Beach, and Burley Heads, which are prime locations along the Gold Coast of Queensland. However, currently the average house price in Palm Beach and Burley Heads are around $1.2 and $1.3 million, while the average price in Mermaid Beach hovers around $2 million. So an 18 year old kid with no money or help from mommy and daddy is buying property at these prime locations? Yeah, that sounds like absolute bullshit, especially since he was only working minimum wage job at the time. This idiot even outs himself when he talks about buying a Subway franchise when he says it was all he could afford since the banks would not lend to a 21 year old. So let me get this straight. A 21 year old with more money could not get a loan from the bank, but somehow an 18 year old with less money was perfectly able to buy three properties in prime locations with no help at all. Sure dude. Now clearly Tyson is lying about how the real estate purchases and how the franchise purchases went down but somehow he did get his hands on three Subway franchises and I must say credit where credit is due because at that point he was actually doing quite well and bringing in a nice profit. However, this fairy tale did not last very long because the success of owning three cash rich businesses quickly goes to Tyson Schultz's head and he starts flexing on Instagram. So basic bitch fake guru flexing aside, he goes on to drop another easy to verify lie saying that he was just 24 when he bought his fourth Subway franchise but in reality he was 28. Now obviously this is a minor lie and not at all a criminal offense, but it shows you the kind of person he is by lying about every single thing just to tell you a better story. Just recently he posted a photo of a black Ferrari 488 GTB and a blue Lamborghini Aventador which he claims to own. But if you check out the customized license plate in the Australian Motor Database, you'll see that these two cars are actually dealer registered. Now funny enough, Tyson does actually own a dealership and he claims that the reason for him having dealer plates on his own cars is so that he doesn't have to pay taxes. 
Which is technically true, but the problem with owning a car through your dealership is that you basically can't ever use it. Dealer plates only give you very limited access to the car. This is why you almost never see him actually enjoying the cars that he claims to own. So when a fan asked him if he had any videos of him driving one of his cars, he responded with a classic lie, it's on my other phone. Yep, just like my supermodel girlfriend who lives in Canada, right? In the court documents, he admitted that another $300,000 Lamborghini that he also claimed to own and flex on Instagram was actually a rental and he had, had to pay $1,500 a week to maintain the Lambo lifestyle. He told the judge that he only owned a license plate, which was the same license plate that he used in the recent Instagram post. Now the big joke here is that even though you are creating a fake Instagram lifestyle, the money you spend to create that life is real and this causes Tyson to burn through cash rapidly. Tyson goes on expensive holidays, stays at amazing hotels and buys all sort of expensive gifts for his, um, let's say, girlfriend. Now even though he was actually selling courses and making thousands of dollars by scamming people, he was not making enough to sustain his fake lifestyle. So he started taking more and more money from the franchises and from his own mother's investment. He had never actually transferred the ownership of the franchises to her, nor had he paid her any of the profits. So after six long years of pleading with his son to give her back the investment, Tyson's mother finally had enough and took him to court. During all of this, it comes out that this dude was full of shit and he had actually lost hundreds of thousands of dollars on the stock market. He had basically ruined the entire business, leaving his ex-wife, that was now the owner and director of the company, with thousands of dollars in debt even though she still had to take care of his child while he was now traveling the world and spending money like crazy with his new girlfriend. Now here's where the story gets crazy because he actually starts making some serious threats against his own mother and it seems like he even lied in open court. Because first, he tries to work out a deal with the lawyers of his mother by offering to pay back $150,000 instead of the full $750,000 that she was owed. And when they say you have more money so we want more, he gets triggered and says, you know what, I will just deplete my whole bank account and then lie in court that I have no money and she will get nothing. Tyson adds to this that he and his girlfriend have over 45,000 followers on Instagram combined and that they can direct these followers to go after his mother and make her life miserable. Now stealing your own mother's life savings is terrible enough, but this takes it to a whole nother level. This guy is truly in the head. The lawyers obviously don't comply with this and they proceed with court filings to which Tyson never shows up, claiming that he didn't have enough money to travel to court and that he was broke. So here your immediate reaction is of course, this scumbag is lying and he's pretending to be broke so that he doesn't have to pay the full amount. However, he then proceeds to present paperwork showing that he actually received Centrelink payments, which is the Australian provider of social services payments, such as Medicare and child support. Now is it just me or does Centrelink sounds a bit like Skynet in Terminator? I don't know. Just feels like a terrible name for a social services system. Anyways, this basically proves one of two things. Either Tyson Schultz is actually broke and living off social security benefits, or the document is false and he's still got some money stashed away or coming in through the stock guru scam, which would mean that he's committing fraud and perjury. Now technically, there's a third option where the document is real and he's falsely receiving social security payments, which would mean that he's also committing fraud and, again, a side dish of perjury. Whichever option it is, all three of these basically suck, but my guess is that it's the second option because based on the information from his mother's lawyers, Tyson was still sitting on about $220,000 worth of stock. So how the hell can you receive social security benefits when you still have this amount of assets? Now maybe things work a bit different in Australia, I don't know. But I do know that this is how they play football. It's not exactly rugby, nor is it football that the Americans play, and it's definitely not the football that the Europeans play. Okay, we're clearly getting off track here. So let's get back to Scrooge McDouchebag over here, since he was clearly hoarding some money, because eventually he was ordered to pay $360,000 to his mother and the business that owned the franchises had to pay another $360,000. Which was great for mommy, however this severely screwed over his ex-wife and put her in the hole for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now originally this is where the story ended, however just recently this saga got a whole new chapter since Tyson Schultz got raided by the ASIC. This is really bad news since these guys don't usually act on hunches meaning that when they target you, you are in deep shit. The main target of the ASIC raid was a stockbroker based in Sydney called Everblue that traded in the stock of a company called Creso Pharma. Here's a picture of the stock, see if you can spot the problem that the ASIC was looking at. Yep, pretty clear case of a major pump and dump with a penny stock and when you have a guy like Tyson Schultz attached to it, it's pretty much a done deal. 
Now, currently, no charges have been filed. However, it's still very early in the investigation. The fact that Tyson was a top 20 holder of the stock indicates that he still has access to serious amounts of cash, which he most likely gets from selling trade courses. However, this pump and dump investigation also indicates that Tyson has probably shifted his focus to simply using his social media pull to steer people into buying shitty penny stocks that he has bought up and uses his followers to pump the stock after which he exits the market and rakes in huge profits. The irony of it all is that this type of scam is actually true and makes him appear to be a very successful stock trader. It's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But what really happens is that Tyson Schultz, or AXS Wolf as he's known online, shows that he just made a shit ton of money and is buying Lambos and expensive bags and jet setting around the world. He then gives you the opportunity to learn from him by purchasing one of his courses and then goes on to recommend a stock free of charge to all of his online followers because he's simply such a good guy and he wants everybody to get rich, this stock then explodes since he and his friends are blasting the stock on all of their socials. They then sell the stock while their followers are buying it up and this allows them to easily double or even 5x their money. With these profits, he goes back to social media to show off how much money he made and buys more crap and the cycle repeats itself. So yeah, technically he is making a lot of money from trading stocks, but it's the money from his own followers. It's the people that are trying to learn from him that are basically throwing the money at him since he's on the other side of the trade. This is highly illegal and that's why the ASIC is now investigating Everblue and Tyson Schultz and if they don't screw this up, ASX Wolf will be locked up just like his yellow Lambo.